This is a sad day for European golf. And a sad day for golf in general. We've got four players that have decided to rip up their DP World Tour cards to never be able to play on that tour again and never be able to compete or play in a Ryder Cup, whether that be a player, vice-captain or captain. Oh, what is going on? Now, those four players are Lee Westwood, Sergio Garcia, Ian Poulter as the Ryder Cup stars. The fourth member there is Richard Bland, a member of the European Tour slash DP World Tour for a number of years. Now, before ripping up their cards, Lee Westwood has absolutely blasted, and I mean absolutely blasted, the European Tour slash DP World Tour absolutely taking them to the cleaners. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video here on Bat9 Films. Each day we bring you a breaking new story. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn the bell so you never miss any breaking news within the golf industry. So let's dive into this story. We've got to think, right? Lee Westwood has been a European Tour member for 30 plus years. He has played in numerous Ryder Cups. He was formerly world number one. Like, these guys are household names. Now, one of the allegations that he said about the DP World Tour, and let me know what you think on this, I really do value your opinion as we go through each and every one of these videos, so please let me know what you think down in the comments. He said that the European Tour, slash DP World Tour, has become a feeder tour to the PJ Tour. Now, I do agree, right? And why I mean I do agree. You've got to think, I'm going to name a couple of players here, Matt Fitzpatrick, Lee Westwood being one of them, Ian Poulter, Rory McIlroy, all started their careers on the European Tour. They then, when they got good enough, when they got invites, when they could compete, made that move to, to play majority of their golf out on the PJ Tour because there is more money out there. 100%. I mean, we've had to see guys like Beef Johnson, unfortunately, not make that happen. He tried to make that move and not quite make it. We've also had guys more recently, haven't we? Matt Wallace, who has made that move and been very, very successful. I do feel Lee Westwood has hit the nail on the head and the European slash DP World Tour is a feeder tour now. It can't compete. The price funds are so far adrift from what they have on offer on the PJ Tour to what they offer on the DP World Tour. So far adrift, apart from those Rolex events, so far adrift from just a normal PJ Tour event. Now, I want to go into this story a little bit further, and there are some really condemning sort of opinions on Twitter. So you've got to think, right? I think this is really, really sad. And maybe the tour, or maybe the players, and I mean the players in terms of Ian Poulter, Sergio Garcia, and Lee Westwood, haven't really thought about this. But we're gonna they're going to seriously have, again, regret when we get to the Ryder Cup in September, and they can't compete. I also think we're going to have regret in, ter in terms of captaincies, because I found this on Twitter. I want to read this out to you because this is absolutely startling. So, Michael, M Michael McEwen said, Per DP World Tour rules, the following can never be a European Ryder Cup captain or vice captain. Never. I just said never, right? Lee Westwood, Garcia, Ian Poulter, Martin Keimer, Graham McDowell. A combined 84 points across 36 Ryder Cups between them. It's a sad outcome. It is. Honestly, that is a sad outcome. That is going to affect the Ryder Cup. You look at these guys to be Ryder Cup vice captains and captains because you want to draw on the experience. We're not going to be able to do that now. We're not going to be able to do that. Who's going to fill that gap? Now, what do you think? Should these guys be allowed to compete in the Ryder Cup? Shouldn't they? And I honestly think, whatever way around you want to look at it, they've not really thought it through. From a tour point of view, I mean, you could argue on both sides, I guess, but what do you think on that? What are your opinions? Should they be able to play? Now, before we go into exactly what Lee Westwood said, I want to say one thing right now. I think golf sometimes, we forget to make comparisons to other sports. You've got to think of Ronaldo, right? He is now playing his football in the Middle East, right? But if he wanted to come back to the Premier League, or if he wanted to come back to Spain, he wanted to go back to Portugal, they would let him. They would let him. 100%. They would let him. So why can't golfers do that? We all know, right, they've sold out for the money. They say it's a business decision, they've sold out for the money. But so do footballers and they sign a new contract. Just a thought, just a thought I want to add in there. So let's get into exactly what this is because 
I don't know. This is, I mean, it's a very, very lengthy statement, and I want to really go into each and every part of this. And as we go through this statement, there are a few pivotal points that we're going to talk about here. So Westwood told Corrigan, this is a statement today. I was a kid when I played my first European event. The Madeira Islands Open in 1994. The year I was born. Probably makes him feel old. I won about £3,000 for finishing tied 19th. I've had amazing times, including all those Ryder Cups. I wouldn't change those years, and I feel like I made a contribution to the tour. I'm not great on stats, but I must have played something like 600 events, won more than 20 titles, and three Order of Merits. So no, I never would have believed it had ended like this. There has to be a bit of sadness, of course. People say I knew exactly what would happen, but nobody told us the extent of the punishments. So my question to you right now is, that bit there, nobody told us the extent of the punishments. Is that Live Golf didn't explain the punishments? Or is that DP World Tour didn't explain the punishments? Either way, right? And this is where, I guess, I do have sympathy because I'm going to miss them, but I don't at this point. Because if you're making a business decision, you find out all the consequences before signing on the dotted line. You find out everything before making that decision. If you're making 100 million, 30 million, 10 million, 20 million, 100,000, whatever it is, pound deal, you make sure you know all the consequences. I know I certainly would. I know you would watching this now. Let's dive into the story a little bit more. So let me carry on here. So nobody told them the extent of the punishment and they continue to do that. The way I view it is that as a European Tour member, I was allowed to be a member of the PJ Tour without any other problem for all those years. Tell me what the difference is. Just because Live Golf is funded by the Saudis, a country where my tour used to play and where we were encouraged to play. Very, very big point, that, isn't it? This is where I get a little bit lost. And this is where I agree with Lee Westwood's statements that the European Tour has been a feeder tour to the PJ Tour. Why can they play PJ Tour but not live? Now, let's just forget for one minute where the money comes from. I know we can all talk about that until we're blue in the face, right? And it's very, very important. But it's just another golf tour at the end of the day, isn't it? It's just another golf tour. Is it because, and this might be an unpopular opinion, there for the first time has been serious competition, serious competition to the PGA Tour? I know not in terms of legacy, but I mean in terms of money played for in tournament. And obviously... The European Tour and the, D and the DP, the European Tour slash DP World Tour and the PJ Tour are very closely knit. Interesting, right? Let me dive into this further. I've been a dual member of the European and PJ Tour, but always said I was a European Tour member first and foremost, and that I had fears about the US circuit basically being bullies and doing everything it could do to secure global dominance. Check my old quotes, it's there. But now, in my opinion, the European Tour has fully jumped in bed with the PGA Tour. And even though Keith Pelle, who is the chief executive, says he hates to hear it, it is now a feeder tour to the PGA Tour. 100%. Totally agree. The top 10 players on the tour, not only already exempt this year, have a pathway to the PGA Tour. That's giving away our talent. That was never the tour's policy before the strategic alliance. Interesting, right? You finish top 10 you already get to play over there sorry i don't want to play under that sort of regime like i always played on the asian tour and got release no problem but they said i shouldn't play in indonesia at the end of last year come on no thanks i don't want to play that game anyway i've said all that this before it should be obvious why i have resigned there is some anger there is some regret and I think it's a very, very fair statement. I don't really disagree with anything he said, apart from the one bit of they didn't know everything before signing the dotted line. Come on, guys. You've got to know what you're getting yourselves into. You have to, right? You have to know. But at the end of the day, what is your opinion? It's a sad time for golf. These guys are being European Tour golf legends. We can't say they haven't. And it's going to be sad to never see them compete again on the European Tour and in a Ryder Cup. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's breaking news story here on Bat9 Films. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn the bell so you never miss a breaking news story.